my name is Eric Annis. I am a uh, professor here at Hood College. Um, I am a, the director of our graduate program in environmental biology. Um, so we have a vested interest in the climate change issue. Um, uh, if you are potentially interested in a graduate program or, uh, this is my shameless plug, um, if you're interested in a graduate education or taking cl classes that are not directed towards a degree even, um, we do have a table set up um, in the booths over in the Whitaker Center, um, so please stop by. Um, on a personal note, I teach uh, two or three classes here at Hood, both at the undergraduate and graduate level that are focused on climate change. Um, so I'm really excited to be part of this as well. Um, our next topic is going to be the development of data centers in Frederick County. And um, our two panelists are Karen Cannon, who you've been uh, listening to all day. Uh, she is our executive director of Mobilize Fre Frederick. Um, she's the conference organizer and our MC. Um, well, yeah, we can do a round of applause. <laughs> And we are also joined by Renee Knapp, who is on the Frederick County Council. Another round of applause. <laughs> so both Karen and Renee are co-chairs of the Data Center Work Group, which was established by the county executive, uh, Jessica Fitzwater, um, just last summer in 2023. Um, and they are addressing issues that are related to the development of data centers um, in Frederick County and what they're going to share with us today are some of um, the preliminary um, findings or thoughts that they have about what should be recommended. Um, so without further ado. All right, so let's see. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. Uh, Renee and I are gonna sort of swap off a little bit going through this uh, presentation um, as we go through the slides. Uh, I wanted to start with just kind of a brief background of sort of how we got here, um, a little bit of history of data centers in Frederick County. Uh, some of this is personal because the first one that was built in the county was the Fannie Mae Data Center that was built in 2005. Um, it's 275,000 square feet. It was one of the first data centers that was uh, LEED certified. It's LEED certified silver. Um, and I actually had the pleasure of working there for about 10 years. Um, I know that that data center, looking back on it now, I mean, we thought it was enormous at the time that it was built. Um, and it employed a lot of energy saving features and cutting edge stuff at the time. And I'm sure that the folks who are developing data centers now would look back at that as a quaint little project that you know is <laughs> uh, just sort of a, a pilot for what's to come these days. So um, there's been a lot of discussion and concern about diesel backup generation associated with the data center industry. So I just wanted to mention, I looked back at some information about uh, this data center back when it was first built back in 2010, it had six two gigawatt, two megawatt diesel backup generators, uh, which they expected to use like three for backup power and three as backups to the backups in case there was a, a major issue. Um, that compares to the last uh, data center proposal uh, on the quantum loophole campus for aligned data centers that um, had included 168 backup diesel generators. So. Um, I know that earlier today in Jamie DeMarco's presentation, he, he mentioned um, the, the legislation that's uh, going through the legislature this year um, having to do with backup diesel generation. So that's a big issue of its own. I could do a whole different presentation on that one probably. But um, anyway, that was, so that was the first data center in the area. Uh, the Social Security Administration came along a couple of years later. It's 300,000 square feet. It has four acres of solar panels near it, so that's kind of a nice um, addition, a little bit of extra energy being produced. Um, then in 2020, the state passed some tax incentives to encourage the data center industry to come to Maryland. It basically gives uh, a sales and use tax exemption for up to 20 years for the data center industry. Um, in 2021, we know that Amazon Web Services was exploring a number of different sites in the county for data center developments. Um, a number of things kind of fell through with that deal, so that didn't end up happening. 
Uh, I think a number of the issues were around, you know, their desire to do some fast track rezoning of agricultural areas and things like that that didn't really fit with Frederick County's standard normal processes. So um, later in 2021, Quantum Loophole purchased the old East Elko aluminum smelting plant area in Adamstown. It's about 2,200 acres, and the expectation is that that would be subdivided into 20 to 30 data center sort of mini campuses uh, there. Um, it is a brownfield site, so and it's only part of it is a brownfield site. A big chunk of the area is actually still being farmed. Um, so I think when East Alco had that property, they intended for the farmland to remain as kind of a buffer around the manufacturing or smelting facility. Um, then in 2022, the county passed a critical digital infrastructure ordinance um, that adds data centers, critical digital infrastructure as a, an accepted use for um, general and limited industrial uses in the county. And that includes you know, some architectural standards, um, sound standards, uh, building heights, setbacks, things like that, but it doesn't really get too much into the details of energy efficiency or power use or, or some of those other things that um, as this industry expands in the county, we would want to take a look at uh, due to the resource use that's involved. Um, around the time that the critical digital infrastructure ordinance was being discussed, uh, Mobilize Frederick uh, started to look into the issue um, and do a little research on it, and we actually wrote up some recommendations to submit to the county executive at that time. Um, our feeling as an organization was that given our location just across the Potomac from Ashburn, Virginia, which is the heart of the internet worldwide, <laughs> um, that it was likely that you know somebody was going to want to build data centers over here. Um, so um, we felt like rather than trying to say, you know, no, that should never ever happen, um, that we should try to figure out if and how it could be done in a more sustainable way, basically going into it with our eyes wide open having the right legislation in place to help manage it, um, and then hopefully derive some benefits from it. Going back to my time at Fannie Mae, I will have to say, I know we talk about data centers as places where, you know, it's hosting social media or, you know, things that we might consider sort of silly or something, but data centers are also doing things like helping us develop climate models, um, storing medical data, in the case of Fannie Mae, cutting the amount of time that it takes to get a mortgage to a fraction of the time that it did back in the 80s and 90s. If you're old enough to remember getting a mortgage back in those days. Um, <laughs> it was. So there are some you know, uses for them that, I mean, we use them all the time and we wouldn't have been able to have this conference assembled without using them in some ways, so. Um, at the same time, they use a remarkable amount of energy to run, um, which is you know, gonna be an impact for the rest of the county. Um, they also use, in some cases, water for cooling, um, and they, they use a lot of water in those instances. Um, so Mobilize Frederick's position was that, you know, development on a brownfield or a previously developed site you know, would be the, the best way to do it if you're going to do it, um, and trying to locate them close to power sources, um, areas where they could reuse treated uh, wastewater, and in proximity to, um, to fiber infrastructure, and basically to be in areas that have already been designated for growth. Um, but we also felt that you know, there needed to be some additional controls added to the critical digital infrastructure ordinance to help ensure that the kind of sustainability um, measures that need to be put in place um, are actually able to be enforced uh, to make this a more sustainable industry. Um, one thing that we did call out and have called out consistently is that, you know, the as um, was mentioned in our opening keynote this morning, Maryland has some of the strongest environmental goals in the country in terms of, or climate goals in the country. Uh, we're trying desperately to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions to meet those goals. Um, and we're also encouraging a hot, very high energy use industry to come to the state. So kind of squaring that circle of, you know, how do you, where are we gonna get the renewable energy to meet the needs of this industry is, is still a big question because um, there's really 
there's a lot of renewable energy coming online, but not the amount that it would take to um, meet the needs of a large data center development. Um, so I've mentioned already uh, about the East Alco site. Um, the quantum loophole development also includes the installation of a fiber ring um, from Ashburn to Adamstown that's referred to as the Q-loop. Um, it brings a huge capacity, um, a fiber capacity to the area um, to support the development on that site as well as potentially development in other nearby areas. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the intent is to develop a number of sites, sort of mini sites on that area. The first site plan um, was approved recently for Rowan Digital Infrastructure. That's on a, I think, 150 acre site. The data centers themselves will be 777,000 square feet of data center space, is our understanding. Um, and just a kind of a note about power usage. So the first phase, not just for Rowan, but for the quantum loophole development overall, the estimate for the um, power usage in that first phase is 1.2 gigawatts. Uh, quantum loophole has also been allocated 1.1 million gallons per day of water usage. Um, right now, that's potable water, but quantum loophole does have a plan to be able to use treated wastewater coming from the Ballinger McKinney plant. Um, but based on some information we received as part of the data center work group, but we don't believe that that infrastructure is going to be in place until about 2027, if I remember correctly. Um, QL has cited a mission um, of creating a sustainable carbon negative data center community. So, um, you know, I think if that can be done, you know, on a brownfield site and we can find the renewable energy, you know, uh, we look forward to, to seeing that be able to happen. Um, let's see, jumping into the critical digital infrastructure ordinance. It was passed in 2022. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wandering back away from it. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, as I mentioned some of this earlier uh, about the critical digital infrastructure and adding um, data centers to the existing zoning ordinance. Um, let's, we'll skip down to the next. Uh, so back in early in 2023, uh, mobilized Frederick, um, the Sugarloaf Alliance, the Frederick County Sustainability Commission, and the Fellowship of Scientists and Engineers, all local community um, sustainability groups, um, all put together their own recommendations to submit to the county um, regarding data center developments and how to manage the, the energy use and the, the other potential environmental impacts coming from the industry and how to best capture revenue from this industry as well. Um, after all of those recommendations were submitted, um, the, the county executive uh, created the data center work group to look further into the issues and develop recommendations for the county to, to look into to strengthen the legislation. So I think at that point, I'm gonna turn it over to Council Member Knapp. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much to Karen. It's been a pleasure uh, serving with her as co-chair in this work group. And I think um, people don't realize. So in addition to, the county has a, sp a spot where you can submit your public comment, but in terms of organizing all of the information that was submitted to us and all of the, the information we've been looking at over the last few months, Karen's the one that, that organized that on a, on a drive for us all so that we would have access to that. Um, and thanks, there are some work group members here um, and ha we're glad to see you here. And we were also happy to work with Pat Murray and Chelsea Kadish from uh, the county executive's office. Uh, the county executive created the data center work group in June of 2023. That's hard. We got you know really rolling probably around August uh, to examine existing laws and other issues related to this industry. The work group, uh, we were charged with finding recommendations, um, like Karen was uh, noted earlier. And um, as Karen also noted, the transition team from uh, County Executive Fitzwater, the Economic Development, Sustainability, and Infrastructure Transportation Committees, also sort of knew that this was going to be an issue. And um, so that was another reason why the um, County Executive formed this group to, develop, to get together stakeholders 
to develop a model for critical data infrastructure that leverages the benefits of data centers while protecting the environment in Frederick County. So I'm just going to go over um, some of the uh, general recommendations that the work group has come up with so far. And it's important to note that these are the general recommendations. You can find a copy of more um, specific recommendations that we're working on. We haven't actually come to a consensus. That will happen on February 8th when we meet um, to discuss what our final recommendations will be. So I'll go through some general recommendations for you. So um, we are, we've decided, we actually got some advice from uh, an economic development person in Loudoun County, because we look to Loudoun County and other areas in Virginia for the lessons learned. We don't want Frederick County to look like data centers in other counties. We don't want a data center next to a car wash and a school and a daycare center. So uh, we wanted to define the opportunity. Uh, the county should consider putting an overall top limit on data center growth, whether that's based on square footage, acreage, or another metric. Power consumption and climate goals. The data center power consumption and corresponding emissions will impact the ability of the state, as Karen mentioned, and the county to meet our climate and renewable energy goals. Power generation. The county is required by the state to meet 14.5% of power generation through renewable energy. And power transmission. The costs to expand transportation infra infrastructure could be borne by the taxpayers. And that's something we looked at. So continuing, water consumption, uh, data centers that use water for cooling, they can use you know, air cooling or water cooling, may use hundreds of thousands of gallons per day. The current APFO for quantum loophole allows for 1.1 million gallons per day, as Karen mentioned, um, and tr the use of treated effluent gray water should be prioritized and uh, the use of potable water minimized as much as possible. Uh, we, another recommendation was to require that the CDI order, ordinance be reviewed on a regular basis, possibly biannually. And that's very important when you consider the fact that, you know, even since we formed this work group, we've been informed of technologies and practices, and, and we're going to have to be, um, it's, it's a fast-moving industry. Uh, a lot of improvements are market-driven, but some of them are not, and we, it's up to us to make sure that we evaluate those um, technologies periodically and making sure that they're working for Frederick County. Uh, we need to include a periodic and reliable monitoring uh, system for all performance metrics, sound, air quality, water, um, and other uses. It required that data center owners repurpose or demolish buildings at the end of their useful end of life. Ooh, sorry. Um, so what happens next? As I mentioned, February 8th is the final meeting of the data center's work group. That is, that is hard to believe. Um, the final recommendations will be discussed and voted upon with any objections noted in the final report. This has been a balanced group that the county executive has formed. Uh, we're not in complete agreement about everything, and we want to make sure that there is opportunity when this report is written that everybody uh, has their say, and that was sort of the, the original purpose of this group. The administration will use the final report to consider proposed updates to the current CDI regulations, and then changes in the regulations must be introduced to the county council and then proceed through the legislative process and, on, and you know, back to the county executive to, for her approval or not. Um, so you can find our entire presentation um, as it is now with, with much more detailed recommendations with citing and with community benefits and with sustainability at the county um, website, the data centers work group. If you go to the county executive drop down, you'll see uh, the county the data centers work group and you can see the material that we've been working through for the past six months. Um, and I, we're still, we have one more meeting when we'll be taking public comment and the portal is still open and um, we thank you all for being here. It's been a, a very interesting experience. Um, it's not quite over yet, but it's important that we get this right for Frederick County. We have an opportunity, but we also have a responsibility, and I think everybody in this room understands that. Um, I would just add one other thing regarding what's on the website. Um, over the course of the last several months, we've had the opportunity to hear from just a tremendous number of different presenters um, at each of the 
the public data center workgroup meetings. And all of those presentations are available on the website um, as well as recordings of the sessions. But, you know, I think if you're interested in learning more about this issue, um, looking through some of those presentations uh, would probably give you a lot of good information um, and would be interesting to take a look at. So, thank you. And, uh, and this isn't the end of the process. I mean, this is sort of the end of the beginning. There's going to be many more opportunities for public engagement, public comment, as any sort of um, changes or updates work their way through the legislative process. And so. Thank you so much. Um, I am really in awe of how much you have managed to accomplish with this working group so quickly. Um, it's really been a, a very short period of time since you guys started. and. Um, this is a tremendous amount of material that you guys have had to digest and, and come up with recommendations for. Um, I think at this point we'd be happy to take any questions. Do you guys want to come over here? And <laughs> Hello. Yes. Uh, my name is William Reed. I'm, um, I do a lot of things, but, uh, but uh, now I'm chair of Frederick County Progressive, so Lisa's question is, is, is uh, as chair of Frederick County Progressive. As you said, um, uh, uh, data centers are use a lot of energy, and uh, how do you uh, envision Maryland uh, uh, reaching its greenhouse gas reduction uh, standards um, if uh, if they're promoting the use of data centers? And can you reasonably expect um, a 14 percent renewable energy solution being beneficial in in helping to reduce the pollution caused by increased energy usage, electricity use. And finally, um, can water be uh, recirculated um, so that you minimize the uh, use of either the water from sewage, untreated or treated sewage or, or potable water? Uh, I'll start with the last one because I think that's a shorter, easier answer, um, and that is that the water can be recirculated, I think, about three times before it, you know, there's enough impurities in it that it needs to be sent back. Um, okay, sorry, is that better? Okay, thanks. Um, so I believe that the water can be recirculated two to three times before it has to go back for further treatment. Um, and. Going back to your first question about the energy use and renewable energy, uh, I don't know that we have a good answer for that. I mean, that's, that's really the big challenge that we have. And it, it goes beyond the county as well. I think it's, you know, that's a state and regional level issue. Um, our electricity supply is coming from PJM, which is a regional electricity supplier. Um, and there are known issues with being able to bring renewable energy online in a, a fast way uh, with PJM. So um, I think this is an area where we all need to continue to advocate and push for more work to bring more renewable energy online. Um, and particularly, you know, working with the Public Service Commission, with regional entities uh, to try to continue to make faster, better progress on that. One way that the, the work group tried to address this in the sustainability subgroup is to focus on energy efficiency and how we can um, use the, the highest standards that are out there now currently in the market with LEEDs and BEPS and, and what can we do, not trying to be too prescriptive, but also writing that level of um, requirement at a county level would be difficult and, and we would have to update that very frequently, but we're trying to find a way to hold um, the industry to, to the standard of using the highest um, quality uh, measurements that are out there right now. So we really focused on efficiency rather than um, trying to come up with our own uh, regulations in that area. Actually, you reminded me with that answer. Um, the state did recently pass a, a building energy performance standard, and data centers are in that standard. So the standard does require that over time, data centers and all buildings reduce their greenhouse gas emissions over time until they get to a, a net zero goal. Um, I don't remember the exact timeline for data centers under the BEPS standards that were just recently released. But that you are gonna see more work 
happening there, and it's that in that way it kind of leaves it up to the data center developers to figure it out. Like, you have a goal at this point, so many years in the future, you need to be at net zero, and rather than us trying to tell them how to make that happen, you know, we're expecting the industry to look into efficiency measures, encourage um, power companies to bring more renewable energy online, you know purchase renewable energy credits, you know, what, do whatever they can in order to get to that, that goal. Go ahead. Go ahead. My name is Nick Carrera, and I have a question on the benefits to the county issue. Um, I watched your last meeting, um, and it, at that time it was raised among you that there has been scant attention given to the costs to the county from having data centers, and it looked like there was really very little time for you even to look at the issue of whether, on balance, there will be a net benefit in terms of revenue to the county or not, that we might end up inviting data centers in here and having to bear the cost of having them here. And I wonder if you're going to have time even to look at that before this, this coming uh, February 8th to, uh, time when you have to actually vote on what your recommendations are. It seems perhaps that the, uh, that the train has left the station on that and we're going to be left I, wanting. So people are, people are continuing to reach out to me anyway and, and, and to others. There, there's, this, this conversation is going to continue. I mean, it has to continue. There will be more information that we will... Um, you know, that um, we will have to look at as we update this legislation. I wouldn't say this report is recommendations, but it's also a snapshot in time, and there will be other issues that we have to continue to address. I don't, there are many people on the work group that kind of felt like we didn't, even though we've been working for six months, did we you know, really examine every single thing that, that in, as, as in depth as we, want, as we wanted to, because people are, uh, the work group members are so they're enthusiastic about finding out, you know, the, the right way to do things. Um, I think we're going to continue. I know we're going to continue to, maybe not in this in the in the work group, but the topic will be continued to be researched by the county, um, and the county will need resources and input for that as well to update the the CDI legislation and to look for continuing benefits so that we do get value for Frederick County, but also understanding the costs, as you mentioned. So I would say it's not, February 8th is not, we're never gonna look at anything after February 8th. So I would want to reassure you about that. I'm glad to hear that because I think one of the very first issues should have been, what is the net benefit to the county? And I, I, I think, <laughs> And that was the, when we formed the subgroups, the community benefit subgroup, that was the intention of, of uh, answering that question. And, and they have worked to answer that question. There's, you know, reporting, uh, reports that were generated, um, and people have worked on that topic. I understand. I said net benefit, not just benefit, I, but net benefit. Thank I you. think um, if we can, I think we have time for one more question on this side. Chris Davis. Uh, I guess. On your presentation, it's a question for both of you. It's a question for both of you, but in your presentation, at the end, you said uh, we should get it right. Uh, what things in your research, uh, in all the issues with the data centers, that you saw like, oh, we definitely don't want to do that, or you know, specific sites where like we don't want to do what they did, or we actually do want to do what they did over here. Did you come upon across? Examples. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, we did spend a good bit of time looking at Northern Virginia where, you know, this industry is way ahead of where it is here now. Um, and in particular, siting really jumped out at us. Um, we drove around an area in Ashburn where there would be a whole series of enormous data centers across one road from some townhouses. Um, or, you know, one of them had like a daycare facility on the corner of what looked like the same property that the data center was sitting on. And uh, I'm pretty sure we don't want to do that in Frederick <laughs> County. So we are, we've, the siting subgroup has looked very carefully at 
and developed a list of parameters where we feel like data centers could be an acceptable use as opposed to where data centers probably would not be an acceptable use. So, you know, trying to steer them into areas that would have been used for industrial use of another sort, um, previously developed areas and areas with the kind of infrastructure that I talked about earlier in the presentation, as opposed to, you know, being next to residential areas or in rural areas that we want to preserve and, and things like that. And I would say, um, we also looked at the way other counties are approaching, have approached data centers, Loudoun and other counties in, in Northern Virginia. And I have to say, this work group in Frederick County is really starting out with the focus of constraining, not other, other counties are much more enterprising. They're trying, how can we, how can we throw open the doors? How can we relax? How can we, um, you, how can we make it so that, um, you know, we're not having the standards that maybe we want to look at in Frederick County. So I think that's important to note that we have sort of approached this with um, constraint, de definition. How can we define the opportunity and, and um, use some constraint, restraint? Yeah, I, I think we're out of time at this point. So I would encourage you to catch up with them after the presentations. Um, and thank you very much for your presentations and sharing um, your thoughts on where to go with this next. Thank you.